Hey, we all know how we're gonna die, baby. We're gonna crash and burn. This week's first descent is the demon. Issue number two. This week was a bit of a, a little bit of everything from one shop. <laughs> Quarter books, dollar books, percentage off books. <laughs> everything you want. It was nice finding some new crazy stuff and to be able to fill a few holes in some of my runs. But as we're uh, slowly coming to the end of the season's comic book haul, I think I have maybe two more episodes left. Then I'll be uh, taking a bit of a break with comic book hauling. I definitely got one more left, but I think I can stretch it into two. We'll see. I might have uh, something coming through the mail that I ordered, but we'll... Uh, We'll see if it gets here. It might be the season premiere <laughs> when I come back next February. But before we get to all that, we got to get to our two from the tomb. So a friend of mine left a comment on one of my videos. He was talking about this book right here. Batman, the dailies, 1943 to 1944. I got this from him from a trade that we did back when I believe George Bush, the first one, <laughs> was in office. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah we uh i can't remember exactly what we traded for uh he was big into the at that time in the gi joes and stuff um i remember trading this this was almost like a throw-in because i got um i remember it was in a deal with a uh, jack nicholson uh life-size cutout joker stand whatever you want to call it and uh this tapestry thing that had the joker's Green printed onto it, so it was like a couple things in this trade, uh, but I cannot remember what, what I gave to him. If he remembers, uh, <laughs> he got better memory than me. But but this has always been one of my favorite books. I believe there's like three or four volumes of this. This was the big deal about this book was uh, Bob Kane's first five years, all his artwork in it. Know what we know now? I'm not sure if that's entirely true, but we'll take the word in it. <laughs> But it's uh, all the daily strips from that era. And I used to read, you know, read a couple each night before bed. Uh, read this many times throughout the years. Cool thing is, it's early parents of the, the Joker too, so you get to read some of that. But yeah, you, you can, you know, read a couple of these. I mean. I swear to God, like, probably reading just this whole page is about as much as, uh, read, <laughs> take you about as much time to read a modern comic <laughs> by the time you get through these, uh, four pants, or these four, uh, strips. But yeah, it was always, uh, and I'm not a huge comic strip fan, uh, you know, I enjoy Calvin and Hobbes, I, you know, I love those books, I got a few collections of those. But after that, I mean, it's I, the uh, the peanuts also. But after that, it's really downhill for what I like. I mean, I used to you know, read the the Calvin and Hobbes, the peanuts. Then I'd go to the Bizarre World, and that was good. <laughs> now I don't buy a newspaper anymore like everybody else. But but yeah, with the comic strips, I used to read in the uh, what was it? I believe in the mid '90s they had the Spider-Man uh, daily comics there too. I'm not 100 percent sure if I'm getting the dates correct, but and if I also remember correctly, they revamped the Batman comic strip in the early 90s also. So I'm curious if there's a collection of that. But I do remember a Spider-Man um, comic strip in the newspapers. Maybe I'm you know, misremembering or something like that, but I'm pretty sure that happened. I should look it up before I... <laughs> Maybe I'll leave a cut in right here. <laughs> Yeah, let's get to what everybody wants to see. They want to see the Joker, so that's about... Uh, there he is. Yeah. Like I said, it's supposedly all drawn by Bob Kane, but as we've learned, because Bob Kane was literally alive when this was still... Uh, when this book got uh, made, because uh, they even have his birth date. Bob Kane, 1916, to, uh, still not dead. And <laughs> still alive. Still alive and kicking at that time. This came out in 1990, so...
Yeah, that's a good memories. Uh, just trading and stuff back in the day. Uh, I traded with a lot of my friends, a couple of kids in the neighborhood, a couple of kids at school. Uh, it was a big trading back then. I think we're going to head back to that. It's a shame so many people are so far away now, because you know, if you want to trade... But if you're going to package it properly, send it out properly, you're looking at, you know, 10 bucks for shipping almost. And you're also looking, you know, maybe two bucks in supplies. So it's like $11. So the trade that you make, you know, you trade in dollar books, you're already in a hole by 11 bucks. So it makes, makes it a little bit harder to trade. So hopefully they come up with, they got to come up with something better so we can trade our comics <laughs> without being charged so much. And the second part here is from that era. Uh, this is the joke, the greatest Joker stories ever told. Brian Bullen cover. This is a must own if you never read any of the Joker stuff. So it gives you a nice little uh, little selection of what you can read uh, from the. I believe it's. Let's see. Yeah, it even gives you the first appearance of the Joker here. So. But for me, this book will always be, used to make me laugh so much. I don't know why. It's another, it has to deal with a comic strip, which is, this appeared in the Joker issue number three, I believe. With the creeper appearance, but. <laughs> this, this comic strip always just cracked me up for some damn reason. It says, what's your name, kid? Of course, it's up, uh, uh I should get pretty close on this here, so you can actually see it. Guy, yeah, it says, "What's your name, kid?" And he goes, "Charlie Cashew." Charlie, what? <laughs> Cashew, and then he says, "Gazoon tight." <laughs> It shows like the Charlie Brown knockoff with a uh, sad face. <laughs> uh, it's a Joker trying to get rich scheme is what they, they're trying to do. So, <laughs> but yeah, if you can find this, you can usually find it relatively cheap. Um, also has uh, Batman issue two fifty one in it. That, uh, I gotta get back up a little bit here. There we go. The one with the uh, Batman on the playing card with the Joker, the classic Neil Adams cover. So if you've never read that issue, probably the first appearance of uh, the Joker that we all know and love today. <laughs> but yeah, this is a. Uh, it was funny. These two books, man. It basically, I bought this one. I think I only paid, yeah, it was like 13 bucks. Yeah, it was 15 bucks back then. But I can't remember. No, I bought this brand new. I bought it brand new. Um, I believe I bought it at the same time I bought Arkham Asylum and the uh, Death in the Death in the Family trade paperbacks. So I bought all three of them at the same time because, uh, yeah, I used to, for those around here that used to be a comic shop in... Squirrel Hill. Uh, I won't give the name because the uh, business is still around. But, but yeah, that's where I bought this from. I can't believe how good a condition it is. I took this in school suspension with me. So it's one of those infamous books that I took uh, when I was in in school suspension for like three weeks. <laughs> I get all my like for in school suspension. Basically, you just do all your homework. Then you I guess sit there for like four hours, five hours. So I just bring this. Just read it, and nobody said a shit because they didn't give a crap about anybody back then. So, but let's get on to this week's haul. Hit the smoke. So, like I was saying, this is a little bit of everything haul. <laughs> Got some quarter books, some dollar books, and some deep discounted books. <laughs> so we'll start off with the quarter books first. Ended up finding some uh, world's finest, some Bronze Age books for just a quarter. Couldn't pass them up. Granted, they're not in the greatest condition. But for a quarter, I couldn't. I couldn't leave them. <laughs> but you know, like on this channel, we always say we count the pages of the Bronze and Silver Age. So we got one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven. Now we should be at the center fold here after this next page. And eight. So you can see the staples there. So the first part of this is complete. We got one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. I'm going to keep stressing this until <laughs> I start seeing it a lot more at shows. Um, I just keep seeing people just hand over money without even doing a simple page count, especially for Silver Age. Bronze Age, uh, Copper Age, not so much. You, pretty much everybody at that time was like, okay, we're not cutting out shit anymore. Or <laughs> just ripping out pages. Granted, there might be a, a poster or something that you want to watch out for, but if you just do the eighth of the staple count, more than likely you're going to be uh, okay. <laughs> eighth of the staple, eight from the staple. Just remember that, not including the cover. I also find this one for a quarter. I already did the page counts on them both, but I just wanted to show uh, show it once again. <laughs> My public service announcement. It should be the rule of thumb. Anything over $25, you're doing page counts. But yeah, I couldn't, uh, just for a quarter, I couldn't pass these out. <laughs> I think that's how I built most of my world's finest collection. I think I got about, eh, about 20, 25 books. It's all been in uh, dollar boxes. <laughs> all from the bronze and silver age. Next up, this is the last book I found in the quarter, book, or quarter bins. But I had to pick up uh, the image first issue of Spawn. Uh, take a quick look inside. It's got the new paper. <laughs> I should take this out. <laughs> they got the center pulled. <laughs> yeah, but I already have a copy of this uh, image first one. So this is basically one of the books I'm going to be giving away. I'm hoping to have like a full priority box when I eventually do a giveaway. So I've been buying a couple of books here and there for that. Next up, I got a couple of dollar books that I picked up. Uh, surprised to see this. Quick stops. <laughs> Hollywood Chronicon. <laughs> the 10th annual. Uh, I thought this was pretty good homage. <laughs> or homage. <laughs> uh, to the Dark Knight Returns. That, uh great scene but this time it's a uh, Kevin Smith <laughs> yeah I saw this this was I believe this was out last year at local comic shop local comic shop day and I just I got it for a buck so I think it was well worth it <laughs> next up Jim Ruggs Hulk grand design the monster book <laughs> uh, with the uh, peach Momoko cover uh, this is another book I bought for that uh, box I'm putting together. I figured uh, people like this artist. I already have the other. I have the Ed Piscor one. And I have the two Jim Rugg ones. Those are the only three I like. But when I find this for a dollar, I couldn't pass it up. I figured this will be good for somebody's collection. Who knows? I might be able to get it signed. Who knows? But that, not bad for a dollar, you know, regular six bucks. So those are my quarter and dollar finds. Next up, these were all, any DC was like 50% off. Any Marvel was 35% off. I should say DC slash uh, independent, whatever you want to call that. <laughs> it was 50% off and Marvel was 35% off. First up, I was able to score this bad boy. Wonder Woman issue number nine. The first appearance of the third cheetah. <laughs> Got some great George Perez artwork on there. The legend. I just love the cat claws through it. <laughs> Putting an X right through Wonder Woman. Yeah, I ended up paying, uh, what did I pay for this? I ended up paying like $3 for it, which is crazy because about two or three years ago, people were trying to get, like, at the shops and stuff, were trying to get like $15, $20 for it. So I find it for $3 in a really nice condition, too. It was uh, awesome. <laughs> Next up, this was a 35% off. So this is a book I needed for my run, for my ASM run. 
Got some Eric Larson drawing some venom. This is issue number 333. I'm getting pretty close to having the entire Eric Larson run of Amazing Spider-Man, so I think I'm only like four four issues away from having that run. I believe he went through 329 to 350, so that's not really a huge run, but yeah, for somebody that doesn't really go out of his way collecting an Amazing Spider-Man, unless it's really on sale. <laughs> I think I got a pretty decent collection going. Next up, if you've been following this channel, I made a roll. Uh, no Superman book. Superman Volume 1 book over $5. And I was able to get this one for $3.50. So it was half off. <laughs> Tissue 226. I love it because it you know, got the yellow cover, of course. But it's a uh, Ode to King Kong. One of my favorite uh, classic movies. Yeah, it's just a, just an awesome cover. <laughs> Uh, speaking of some Silver Age, got some Detective Comics. This is issue 375. I bought this one because it was, first of all, it was like two bucks. Second of all, I love this classic Batmobile. Even though I'm a bigger fan of the 1989 Batmobile, but probably my second favorite. <laughs> Next up, I ended up picking this one up for a dollar fifty. Eh, I'm not sure. It's not that bad looking. I mean, I'm not sure the camera's going to do it justice, but it's, it's not completely bone white or anything like that. But it's it's still a decent book. It has the uh, newsstand. Yeah, for somebody who doesn't collect newsstand, I'm sure been showing a shitload of them. <laughs> That's right on the PZ channel. We contradict ourselves one video to the next. <laughs> No, but for that, for cheap price, I'll always pick them up. Just because uh, you could always possibly trade down the line or something. Because people think these are... Me, it takes... I'm a big fan of not having it at all. But I already own this copy of this. I might as well take a look at it. We didn't look at anything else, really, before we got to this one. Next up is the Savage Dragon, issue number one, the first brutal issue. <laughs> uh, this is the issue number one of the three issue mini series, so it's the first solo of a uh, solo title of Savage Dragon. I don't own. I I thought I owned like all three of those issues until I started putting everything in the CLZ app, and I was like, wait a minute, I'm missing like. <laughs> so I never owned this one. Uh, there's I think there's four different variants of this. Each uh, Savage Dragon has a different color, I believe. But uh, it's it's been something I should been trying to get. I have issue three already. I know that because I looked at the CLZ app. So I just gotta find issue two. I ended up paying like a dollar fifty for this because it was in just so really nice condition. So yeah, dollar fifty, not not too bad. <laughs> this one I actually paid. Uh, I think it was like six dollars for because it was twelve. Yeah, six dollars. This is Savage Dragon issue number two seventeen. I like this one. <laughs> This one is, uh, I think the print run on these right around this era for Savage Dragon was under 5,000 books. It might even be under 4,500. Uh, print run was very tiny on these. I'm, I'm assuming it is now, too. Uh, it's got, they got a few diehard fans. I still buy it monthly. One of my favorite books to read. Is it a book I'm going to try to get all the other copies? <laughs> Probably not. But I, when I find them dirt cheap and stuff, I always pick them up. But this one had Spawn and Ant in it, so I figured uh, it was worth spending a little bit of money on. Uh, the only one I'm really going to try to spend any money on is the the issue with uh, the zombie uh, <laughs> Osama Bin Laden. <laughs> That's the only one I really want, and I'll pay a little bit of money for that. But everything else, I'll just if I find it, I'll just buy it. I think I got the first 25 issues of Savage Dragon, and it just like I got bits and pieces all the way through current until I get to about issue 246 that I got every single issue after that to, I think it's 267 now so nice uh 20 issue run but the crazy thing is the Savage Dragon it seems like it's coming out <laughs> almost like maybe three to four times a year so um, and there's a big I think it's next month or the month after uh a big uh anniversary issue where it's $9.99 from this like triple size so if it's triple size you know you always gotta pick it up 
for that nine ninety nine because it's basically you know, four dollars, you know, twelve bucks to buy three issues anyway. So I forgot about this one. This was also a quarter book. <laughs> I picked it up because I just figured uh, I've never really seen it before. It's the Freedom Collective, you know, communists, <laughs> mightiest superheroes, super communist, super capitalist. <laughs> Yeah, just some Cold War bullshit. <laughs> but I don't think it's a pro-communist book, because as I was reading it, a little bit of it. That's what the interiors look like. But it's got the, uh, <laughs> the photo retouching kit. So that's the infamous uh, photo of uh, Stalin making somebody disappear. <laughs> and they got the uh, record your parents' voices at home, then send it to us. So this is not a pro-communist uh, book, <laughs> which is good. This will be definitely be a what you read in PZ book here that I'm going to spend a little time on. Oh, and speaking of the other a-holes from the 20th century, of course we got, uh, not Sergeant Rock, not the Americans. Hell yeah. <laughs> But there's other freaks from uh, the 20th century. Our Army at War, issue 229. Sergeant Rock is one of those comics that I pick up, that, almost like Conan. I'll buy one or two issues here or there, like maybe one issue a year. I get my fix, they don't have to buy anymore. <laughs> it's only like something, okay, I gotta get, no, I gotta get issue 229, 230, 231, 232, you know, no, it's nothing like that. If I see something cool, you know, it, what drew me to this is the Battle of Two Sergeants. So it's like Sergeant Rock by, versus, uh, uh, whatever the Nazis called their sergeant, I guess. I guess sergeant. It was like a basically one on one battle. So it's just enough enough for me to pick it up. And like it, it was only it only cost me four bucks. Got the Joe Kubert art on there. He's the uh, the World War Two artist of choice. But yeah, like I said, uh, definitely uh, once a year, twice a year at most, I pick it up. I still have another issue that I bought that has just uh front cover to it but I put it uh, it's literally on my bookshelf because <laughs> uh, it's one of my favorite covers that Jim Cooper did but that's my haul for today all right guys I gotta cut this one short this week it's been too busy I'm trying to catch up on everybody's videos so I'm a little bit behind sorry it took me a little bit while to get to some of the comments too from last week uh, I usually try to get those within 24 hours but lots of things happening so hopefully this week we'll get back on track <laughs> But uh, I'm going to start watching some of the videos on Friday night here. The past Friday night, because it's when I release this, it'll be Sunday. But anyways, who gives a hell? <laughs> All right, guys, as always, check out the channels down below. Check out the links down below. Really appreciate all the comments. Appreciate all the support. Appreciate all the uh, new subscribers I have. So hopefully when I get to 616, I might, I'll might i probably do a contest then. Like I'm, I'm, I'm starting to build up a box here, so... Maybe make it one winner, and maybe make two winners, who knows. But uh, it'll be so one of uh, the regulars win. <laughs> That's, uh, you want to get in on that contest, man, start commenting down below. <laughs> For the rest of the dudes, man, you know who you are. I really appreciate all your guys' support, and we'll talk to you next time.